Hi, my name is Keith Day and I play in a band called the Mixed Nuts and we've played over 2,500 gigs. Today I'm looking at a lead sheet and I'm trying to decide how I'm going to play the bass part on this lead sheet. So let's give this a spin. A one, two, three, four. Yeah, I think that'll work. So, uh, you might ask, what is a lead sheet? This lead sheet was provided to our band by a gentleman named Bob Nohavik. Turns out he's our band leader, and um, he has actually created over 1,900 lead sheets. So, rather than try to answer the question of what a lead sheet is myself, I thought maybe I'd take you along with me, and let's go to Bob's house, and ask him what a lead sheet is. So here we are at Bob Nohavik's home in beautiful Park City, Utah. Where did he go? Howdy, folks. <laughs> and there he is himself. So this is where Bob lives. We're here to talk about lead sheets. Let's go into your uh, humble office and uh, take a look. Let's do it. So as I said before, we play in a band called the Mixed Nuts. We've played over 2,500 gigs. And I know that we have a huge music library. Where did we get all that music? I arranged it all. How many arrangements? I think it's in the neighborhood of 1,800 now. 1,800? Right. How long did it take you to arrange that much music? Well, I've been doing it for 12 years. 12 years. <laughs> so these are, these are existing songs, uh, hits of the past. Uh, and what styles of music have you done? Well, for? we started out because that's what our band started out to be uh, an inner group for older folks. And so the uh, music period of time, we, we advertise us as being music of the 40s and 50s. That's a big band era. And uh, so all of the music that we started with um, was in that era. Now, more recently, I've expanded our library to include music all the way up to uh, the present day. Okay, and with that many songs, we don't memorize our songs. We, no, we, sir. we play from the music. Okay, what's the format of that music? Well, basically it's called a lead sheet. What's a lead sheet? Okay, well a lead sheet is basically a melody and the chord that goes with that melody listed above it. If it's a vocal, it has the lyric on it as well. So it's a very simple sheet, the melody line, the chords that go with that melody, and the lyric. I have, uh, I got a, an example of you. Sure, you can. can we look at an example? This is an old, old book. This is what is called a fake book. Musicians know what a fake book is. <laughs> this one was... Uh, Looks like a real book to me. It, yeah, it was. <laughs> this one was published back in 1970, so it has music from the 70s back. And so, and it shows the melody line. It has the chord listed above each melody, each one, and then the lyric. So, so that's our fake book. But uh, now, with the advent of the computer and the internet, we can access lead sheets on the internet and locations on the internet. Really? Yeah. It's an Excel program, and it has all of the music that we have. And it starts with number one, and it's simply numbered. So if I go down to the bottom of the list, uh, it says wow. 1,924 copies. 1,924. And that, that's, that's the number of songs, right? Because the number of songs. I know when we play gigs, uh, in my book, I see both a, a female version yep. and a male version. What's that about? Well, uh, some of our vocalists can sing fairly low in their range, and so we call that the female vocals. Uh, but there are other vocalists that don't have that range down at the bottom, and so we have a male vocal uh, range. Now, the male vocal could be sung also by a male person. An but, octave lower. Yeah, or whatever. yeah, well, an octave lower. So now, I need a part to play my sax. The sax is an E-flat alto sax. And so in order for it to be played with the keyboard and so forth, I have to transpose that music to a different key, 
the, and the key is a key that is three sharps higher than the key of the keyboard, three sharps higher. And so here's, uh, here's the male vocal. Now I'm going to show you the male sax vocal, which is going to be now, and we're going to predict this. And if I'm right, we're going to have three sharps higher than two flats, which is two sharps. And I'm going to go to the sax, ah, two sharps, and we were right. So what is that, the key of D? Key of D. If I'm right, okay. And so now, that's the, that's the part I play to play with the, uh, with the band. So you, you create these on the computer. Does this mean you have to retype or re-enter all these notes for like all four of these versions? I mean, that's a lot of work, isn't it? Mm, not quite. I have to enter the notes for the first version, one version. And then the program that I have, which is called Finale. Finale is the Cadillac of music transcription programs. The cat, it's a very expensive program, but the Finale program allows me to shift and change the key with a stroke of the keyboard. Oh, nice. So That's nice. I can move to any of those keys. So what if, you, what if we had like a, a B-flat trumpet or trombone player join the band? Which one of these would they use? None of them. I'd have to transpose every one of the songs to the B-flat trumpet part. So that pretty much covers what a lead sheet is. We play from lead sheets and um, the keyboard, having just chords, uh, improvises the various uh, the rest of the chord, you know, and improvises, uh, puts in their own, own styling and so forth and so on. The bass player looks at the chord, chord again and he also uh, does some improvisation. In other words, he plays notes in between what this note is and that note is. He puts in his own notes in there to trans, kind of like, uh, what do you call it? What kind of notes do you call those, Keith? You're the I, call them chord, I call them chord scale notes. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, they're moving notes and so forth, and that, that gives it that way. How should a musician who's really kind of never played from a lead sheet, how should they approach it and how can they learn how to do it? Like a keyboard player, for example. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a growing process. It's a learning process. Um, this is, when we talk about chords, we're talking about music theory at this point. And uh, so when you see a D chord, for instance, in this case, you have to know what constitutes a D chord. Our main keyboardist is a, a, a lady, her name is uh, Catherine Cummings, and, and um, I mean, she's a fabulous piano player, my goodness. She plays other gigs and stuff all over the place. Um, but I remember when she started with the band, she was a little green on lead sheets. Can you tell us the story of how she figured that well, out? I, she, you know, she, I, I found her on the internet. She said she was uh, uh, interested in accompanying people and I need, we needed a keyboardist. And I said, well, would you be interested in, in uh, playing in a band? And she said, well, I, I could try it. And I said, you have to play from lead sheets. You know what a lead sheet is? And she said, no. <laughs> and I explained it to her. And I said, uh, do you think you might be able to do that? And she said, well, I think I could learn. And so uh, we, we uh, had her come aboard. I looked at her music one day and looked at what she had done. And she had taken each chord and actually written the chord the uh, notes are right above each chord for every chord in the song. <laughs> wow! So she could look, but she but at uh, the time it must have taken her to do that for every for every uh, thing in the song, and she did that until she learned by l simply doing it over and over again that a D chord was D F sharp A, and and a G chord was G B D etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And then, of course, not only do we have the major chords, but we have, uh, here, this is a seventh chord, has the seven beside it. Here's a minor chord, you have to understand what a minor chord is. This chord here with a little zero on it is called a diminished chord, and it has a special kind of structure as well. So this is theory, music theory, um, and that's what the, the uh, piano player has to learn, be able, has to be able to do. The bass player has to be able to know so that he knows what notes he can play in between this note and this note and make it sound good and transition notes and so forth. Yep. And by the so way, forth. Catherine, she just brings her lead sheets to the gigs now. 
nothing written on and she no. just kills it she, does. she is so good so what about uh i mean I, I i know that when we show up at a gig and we'll have a a, a different mix of musicians and we get a little bit different style um is that a problem like if we get a piano player that has a particularly a jazz style or we get one that's more of what i would call like a ragtime player is is that a problem in, in the band not really not really uh, occasionally once in a while we might get a person who plays so far out of our style that it really doesn't fit but for the most part the musicians we have in fact no music now all the musicians we have they play within our style and now each one plays differently each one has a different uh, especially amongst the keyboard well i guess i should say keyboards and basses both but especially among the keyboardists the keyboardists will have a variety of styles what's neat about that for me and maybe for everybody in the band is that i get to hear various styles of keyboard playing and i don't have to be bored with one person's style all the time so i get to hear the various styles and it's always very interesting and exciting to me to hear somebody play How High the Moon differently than the last keyboardist played How High the Moon. So uh, somebody might wonder why would a band need to have, you know, 1,924 lead sheets in their library? I mean, what's, what's with that? Well, I can answer that question. The way I'd answer it would be there may be mus musicians who are skilled enough to have all of these melodies and chords in their head. Mm. And so they just play that melody from their knowledge of the melody in their head. They just know the songs. They know the songs. Not only do they know the songs, they know this chord structure. So they can, what is called ad-libbing, which is, you know, you can move the notes around and so forth and so on. Uh, those are very, very, very skilled musicians. And many of our musicians are not quite that level I'm not that low yeah, I'm not no yeah, way you know I can't do that so yeah so um, we ha we have music and, 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 and we that's play fine. we play a lot of gigs and uh, never get bored with our music and I think that's a credit to you and the fact that we have this massive uh, library we come to a gig and it's just it's almost fresh every time it's so fun where we perform there are many of our venues are repeat performances month after month after month after month. All right. Well, you mentioned that you create all these lead sheets kind of from, well, maybe we should have you show us. How, how do you make them all? I mean, how do you do that? It must have taken a long, long time. Well, would you like me to show you how I do it? I'll, yeah. I'll, we'll create a lead sheet today. How is that? I'd love to see it. All right. Here we go. There you have it. So uh, Bob actually went on to show me how he creates a lead sheet. And we're going to do another video on that. So uh, don't worry, you'll get to see that. But we ran out of time on this video. I'm back home again. And I need to get back to work on uh, figuring out how I'm going to play this uh, lead sheet. But please subscribe to our channel right down there and push the notification button. And uh, please visit us on our website. It's www.mixnutsmusic.org. And also like us on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash the Mixed Nuts Swing Band. Goodbye from the Mixed Nuts. in the flip is an F sharp diminished seven chord. Good grief.